hello and welcome to Post-Quarantine Art Chats. Today we're chatting to Jacob Butler, also known as Shaky, an artist and mural artist from Perth WA. I met Jacob last year at the Artist, artist Path hosted by The Hatchling and Rochelle Dusty. Um, I could really relate to Jacob's very organic introduction to the art world and found him a really laid back and genuine person to talk to. Jacob has a very unique uh, live art practice and is also a master muralist and painter. His style has a real sense of nostalgia and Jacob's love of his work, people and the environment really shine through in everything he does. So, thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you, thanks for the intro. <laughs> Usually it's um, about that I've got an essential tremor, so that was good that it wasn't about that. <laughs> Okay, so um, the first question I was going to ask you is how are you and your family coping? How have you guys gone through um, COVID? Are you all well and safe? Oh, yeah, no, we're sweet, yeah. We, um, we're in the, we're living in uh, North Frio and um, my wife, Angie, is a wedding photographer and a photographer and I, um, yeah, artist, I do uh, live, uh, I do live art, paintings, murals, sort of anything really. And then um, the main focus was live wedding art as well, which I'd partner up with Ange. And pretty much overnight, we are in Adelaide. Um, I was painting over a wedding over there and just finished up and we were due to have dinner with the um, bride and groom. And then pretty much overnight, we saw that they were starting to close up the borders. So we left overnight. Wow. And when we came to Perth the next day, basically we were getting phone calls and all the weddings got canceled. Oh, wow. Um, Sort of like indefinitely, um, but lucky for us, they were just postponed. But anyway, we realised that all of a sudden we had four months of like a clear schedule for once and it was actually pretty exciting for us, yeah. I thought. Like, I mean, like who likes working, you know? Like it's nice to, um, to do your thing, but it's always nice to, to um, not have to worry about money, you know, or, or yeah. fulfilling, um, you know, a schedule. So we thought, oh, let's get out of here. Let's go to the farm. So yep. we just moved to the farm. That's awesome. And uh, we've been here for like two months now. Yeah. And it's probably been the best farm we've had, I don't know, probably since, since we've even met each other, I reckon, because you sort of, you can do your own thing. So it's been really good and we're all healthy and raising our little baby Sienna, who's like 11 months now. Um, yeah, been really good. Yeah, that's really nice. What a nice kind of time out, sort of block from life you guys have had. Yeah, well, that's it. it can, um, we're really busy with weddings and stuff and um, you sort of prepare yourself. Like, I guess it's sort of seasonal work, like photographers or businesses and stuff. And um, usually from like, it would be um, s September and a few in between till June, you're just flat out. So we, we yeah. knew that we were going to be flat out and it sort of becomes all consuming. So it's just nice to go, let's just do whatever we want. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. just for those who um, might not know about your work, can you just give us a little bit more of a rundown on exactly what your kind of practice looks like? Um, well, my studio looks like a mess. Um, but that's because I'm always just doing heaps of different things. Like I just love everything to do with art. I love murals, um, aerosols, street art. I love portraits, commissions, and then, um, quite often I'd tee up with Anne because she's a brilliant photographer. We'd often do projects together where we're sort of creating mural together for design. Um, she'll take photos and we'll create it to a design or paint it. Um, so we often do lots of murals during the, the year, but um, basically in, in between the, the, I guess the, the main um, revenue and, and focus of our careers it's through the wedding industry and it all started when um, Ange got this, basically she got asked to um, photograph a wedding of this uh, football player called Robbie Gray and his wife. And it was in Melbourne. And I just really wanted, and it, well, she got the job. Um, I used to shoot weddings with her, but obviously wasn't as good as her. So I just really wanted an excuse to go over there. And um, we thought, because I was doing a lot of live art events, why don't I bring the easel and do a painting of them? Yeah. at the wedding so it's just like we just knew there was a gap and, and it was something that i could do paint fast and paint like a story so we, we decided to do relate 
the weddings. And anyway, I rocked up. I went on Gumtree, got a, um, an easel in Melbourne for 70 bucks and the canvas was already there. Sort of came with the easel. It was like perfect size, 30 by 30. Um, and shot the wedding. We got a photo of them at like the first kiss. Yeah. And I set up the easel and painted it um, like all through the night in the reception in front of all the family and friends. And um, yeah, it's pretty nerve wracking. I had to have a few beers to, yeah. to chill out a bit and get the job done. But anyway, end, end of the day, they really loved it. And yeah. they had, you know, he's a famous footy player. So they put it on Instagram and Facebook. We didn't ask for anything, but they did it because they loved it. And then just overnight, it became a thing. And like yeah. the next morning, we were driving the Blue Mountains to, um, to go on this horse riding track. Yeah. And my email just blew up and it was like, can you paint my wedding in Melbourne, Adelaide, Sydney, Perth? Wow. And it just went from there. Wow. So, um, yeah. Just always kept it all organic. Like I never really wanted to push it and jam it in people's faces because I want it to be something special. Yeah. People seek me out, but yeah. it's still get, get really busy with it. So we've just been refining it and make, making it better and trying yeah. to make I guess provide a better service for couples and do bigger and better paintings and yep. and uh, at least we get to work together and travel together. That's a, that's so cool. I, I didn't realise that um, when you were telling us last year about your work, I didn't realise that it was your wife that was also the photographer. And I was thinking, boy, that's so cool that you guys get to work together all the time and travel together. You kind of got your own area of specialty, the both of you, but you get to work together. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Definitely. It's definitely great working with her. And then you can yeah. take trips to over east or painted in New Zealand before, go to the same wedding, yeah. um, turn it into a holiday. Yep. Yeah. So it's just something we've always wanted to pursue and, and keep going with. And like I said, the COVID actually gave us four months off pretty much. Like I've got a wedding next week in Geraldton, but starting up again. But it's just been really nice to, to at least sort of put that on ice for a bit and start to do our own thing as well um, yeah. with yeah. art. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're an artist, you probably have some, some level of um, obsession. I'm, I'm certainly obsessed with, um, you know, paintings and getting stuff done. And it tends to, you know, quite often not, I can't sleep or I'll wake up in the middle of the night and my head's just blaring, you know, especially when you're um, with a schedule, it's just one after the other. So to finally be able to just unplug, like you're saying, and start from scratch, it really means that you can just enjoy your surroundings a whole lot more as well. Yeah. And I think you get more creative when you're plugged out of that, um, you know, the stress of having deadlines all the time. Yeah. Um, it's been especially good for us as well because Sienna, our, our little daughter, she's just grown up. And like I've painted this, we've got a water tank out the front of the house and I've painted it in all these old photos of um, like little kids, the way they're from like 1920s, 1910, 1930 vintage photos of like kids playing with animals. So we always wanted her to grow up like that because I grew up in the country. It's exactly what's happened here. Like um, we built it, we built like a chicken pen and she's playing with the chickens. There's a little Joey she's playing with the kangaroos. There's how cows. Did that, how did that happen by the way? I have to ask that question. How did you end up with um, a kangaroo baby? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a long story, but the, it was basically rescued. Um, by a friend in Bullsbrook who was looking after our Kelpie. And then we went to basically get the Kelpie to bring back to the farm. And he said, well, the, the Kelpie and the, um, the Roo are basically in love. And that's what he said. So he said, well, you better, you better take them both. So we, we took it to the farm and we've got a, uh, a neighbor who's been looking after Joey's for about 30 years. Pretty much everyone in when Danny has Joey's in multiple. So the a neighbor who's, like a rescue um, licensed person and everything. Basically, he's got the full kit, like the pouches and the milk bottles and everything. So we've basically just been looking after this Joey under the guidance of her. And um, it's basically got a paddock um, when it gets a little bit, bit bigger. So That's yeah, it's awesome. just been, it's been quite, quite an experience. Pretty, yeah, a lot of fun. I think I'd Except it's there. Sorry. There. They're tricky, you know, like I feed it at 2 a.m., 5 a.m. every night because they drink every three, four hours. Now a little bit less, but I'm constantly feeding that thing. So I've basically got two daughters. Well, one, the, I've got two kids anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it, it must be a, a bit of a job, but definitely worthwhile, I'm sure. 
Oh yeah, like when else are you going to do that? You're living in Perth all of a sudden. Now you're in a farm. There's a joey. You know how how you're going to not want to look after the joey? That's it. And how nice for your daughter too to grow up with that. That's pretty cool. So in terms of COVID, like um, obviously it's presented quite a lot of challenges with the the wedding industry pretty much just coming to a complete stop. Um, and like in terms of work looking ahead, like do you think you guys will be like changing the way you work your practice or are you looking forward to sort of getting back into weddings? Uh, no, not really changing at all. I don't think we've, um, we're basically creating a new brand called Arts Collide because before the wedding um, painting was all just word of mouth through the shaky brand. But if you look at my Instagram, it's, you can't really have weddings and then have video of a joey and then, you know, video of a rock painting, something like that. It just doesn't really work. So we've, we've been working on that brand um, so that we can launch it sort of just in time when people are going to start to um, gear up to look at wedding planning and stuff. Yeah. So, um, and then I've, I, I've actually been pretty busy with commissions and, and murals and stuff. Um, I think because some, a lot of artists concentrate on one thing, whether it's portraits or landscapes mm. or whatnot, I've always just been interested in everything and just throwing myself at every style and everything. Mm. So it, I guess it's just given me more opportunities um, to, yeah, I guess to more jobs and, and so on. So I've been pretty good. Um, but at the same time, I actually, I've taken on quite a few, um, few jobs like a few months ago and I'm still working on them. Yeah. And like, it would have been nice to actually n n like spend more time painting my, my own stuff as well. Yeah. So like, I, I think in the, in the scheme things, like in your whole lifespan, if you just have a dip of, of income in one year, then who cares? You're like, in the grand scheme of things, you may as well use that time to actually work in your own stuff. And I, I, it's nice that the government's sort of levelling out the playing field by giving people money just to survive. Yeah. Um, so I really want to, like, look, use that opportunity to actually spend any spare time I have to, like, develop my own work because I think at the end of the day, you can sell a painting privately and that's cool. You get some money out of it. But really, your legacy should be about creating your own style and, um, you know, body of work, which is what I've always yep. been working on. What message um, you want to send to the world and, and what you want to leave behind? Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, even just like if somebody sees whatever you've just painted, that they go, oh, yeah, that's that's his piece because that came from him, mm. as opposed to um, this is just a, a painting of somebody else because somebody paid him to paint that person, you know? So yeah. whether it's style or, or anything, yeah. um, it's... Like it's it's just all it all comes down to like your unique um, voice, like your vibration, like how how do you communicate your style in the art form? And I've always been wanting to work on that a bit more, yep. which I'm I'm doing bit by bit. And at the moment, I'm just painting on water tanks and rocks and stuff. So it's not even like there's no um, financial gain out of it, but I th that's sort of the fun part as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think if you do what rings true to you whether you get paid for it or not eventually if it feels right to you someone else is going to love it um i was going to ask you about murals and artwork because i had this conversation recently with someone about um who sort of splits their time between murals and studio work i don't know too yeah. many people that do i think most people tend to prefer one or the other do you i, I sort of find i can't do one without the other i, I love my studio work but I get, I sort of lose my confidence with a canvas if I haven't done a mural for a while. I find my murals tend to fuel my creative energy for my studio work. How does that sort of work with you? How do you find splitting up that, that part of your um, career? Is it same, same for you or? Um, to me, is it like everything's really the same, whether it's uh, a lot of painting or a mural or, or anything. I always just see it as like a, real challenge so like every piece I do I, I give it a hundred percent um and like mural specifically because it's more of a challenge usually like it's larger and because I'm trying to really perfect like not that I'm even close but I'm trying to get better at um spray paint then that's something I always look forward to mm. um 
because I just figure out that at the end of the day, if you want to make a good living, you can't paint like a skyscraper with a paintbrush. So you've got to, you've got to learn um, aerosol. So mm. I sort of get excited um, by any job that that's challenging. Um, and then I just usually st- like, I just don't even or refuse um, any work that isn't challenging. You know, if it's just something mundane and I can do it, um, then yeah, I just, I don't. Yeah. So um, that I, I suppose that's why my Instagram's a mess because I'm always just trying everything. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've, got, <laughs> I've got a couple of challenging murals come up and I'm, I'm so half-hearted about it. I, I really want to do it, but just not now. <laughs> You know, yeah. I, I want to do it later in the year when I'm ready, when I'm, when I'm sort of, I'm just enjoying, I'm not normally a homebody, but I don't know, I just sort of found this new niche in my studio and it's all kind of going well and I'm happy and I don't really want to disrupt that at the moment. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I hear. And then the, like, for example, with murals, um, because I, I pretty much learned aerosol just on the, like on the job, which is not really like very good that I'm actually practicing while I'm getting paid, you know, like you're nice to go in there with the confidence to, yeah. to know exactly what you're doing. So most of the time I'll wing it. But now like with the break, I found like there's a big water tank in our place and I've done a big, a giant portrait with um, Angie and Joey in black and white. And it's something I've always wanted to do. So um, now I know with the next mural, I'm not going to be so worried, you know, because now I've yeah. done it. Yeah. And I've painted it, erased it, and I spent way too much time in it. But, um, I got it to the point where I'm like, yeah, that's that's the point where I wanted it. So, um, yeah, it's how I treat things as well. Like if I, I guess if I feel like I'm out of my depth as well, I just get somebody else who I know can pull the job off, and um, you know who's going to refuse work if it's a cool job. And then if you can do it together, then that's a win. Yeah, it takes out stress because you know at the end of the day it's gonna it's gonna look great. Yeah, if you choose yep. the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. I guess I just I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself. I'm the same. I've, I haven't had any training. I've just sort of come into this quite organically and naturally and sort of learning as I go along. And now I've sort of found this little studio thing that I'm comfortable with. But when it comes back to murals, I mean, it's really just hand, hand-painted hand murals that I'm comfortable with. But anything beyond that is I feel mm. like I'm out of my depth. And, um, yeah, I really got to... Mm. Really take on a challenge where I can get someone on board who can help teach me some things, I think. Cause yeah. I think that's well, I've always done in team. And I, I just like to think if somebody wants my service, like it doesn't matter how you get it done. If you, I think part of your, your role as an artist is to have a vision and if you know the right people to help you fulfill that and go for it, if it's mm-hmm. going to work for you financially and so on. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good advice. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that on board. I think. Yeah. Um, so just in terms of just coming back to COVID in terms of like the bigger picture, do you think, like, how do you think COVID is going to sort of affect the arts or the creative industries around the world moving forward? Um, I don't know. I think I just, I, I laugh about the influences. I reckon that's funny because, um, like you can't take photos of yourself anymore if there's no product to sell because everything's in lockdown. So I think it's kind of cool for creative people because your your job is to create. So it's sort of going to bring out those people who were creators to um, to really thrive a bit, you know, because um, hopefully it'll put them forward as opposed to the, the people who take credit for being in front of work, if you know what I mean. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I absolutely so I believe that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's going to favour the, the actual hard workers out there and I think you're just going to um, keep pushing forward to distinguish yourself. And you know, I've had people yeah. say to me, try and knock me down in price to a point that it's just like, that's more than what it actually, it's less than what it actually costs me to do. Like, <laughs> what do you yeah. think I do? And they're like, oh, don't you just paint pretty pictures for fun? Don't you just do it for fun? It's like middle of yeah. the No. I've got bills to pay. I've got my house to feed. Like, I don't just go out and paint for fun because anyone can do it like it's something you've got to work hard at you've got to work really hard and build your skills and and you've got to invest time and money and energy and time away from from people to to sort of develop something and it's business building like there's so many aspects to being a painter like it's it's a jack of all trades and 
yeah, like you say, I think, I think all the creatives are really coming out and a lot of people I've talked to have had to be really creative with their business as well because their business was structured yeah. around, you know, workshops or, or people. And so they've had to restructure the way they do things. And it's really making people shine who are normally quite quiet and yeah, mm. sort of showing up their creative skills sort of, um, in life. Uh, like just not like ridiculing, just, um, just like terrible ignorant remarks about, you know, how much are you paid or whatever. Mm. And that's why I found, particularly with weddings and so on, like if, you, if you're proud of your product and you're selling it at a price, then um, I think I've been successful because I've never really jammed it down people's faces. faces. Like I haven't put it on Gumtree or I haven't advertised it at all actually. I haven't put it on those wedding sites because you, you will get people like everywhere um, just wanting a bargain or they want it because someone else has it. So if you let the people who do um, appreciate art, then... They'll definitely spend on it, you know. You just got to wait for it. Um, they're definitely out there. Yeah. And usually, yeah, usually it's nice. They'll come to you because you know word of mouth, or you're producing something you need. Yep. There's that really cheesy saying that's been around for a long time: "Your vibe attracts your tribe." But it's so true, though. You know what you? I think what you give out and and what you're looking for. If you stick with that and stay true to yourself, you tend to attract the right people that will give you respect. Yeah. So, yeah. I only started two, two and a half, two and a half years ago was when I started. It wasn't probably even that, it was two years ago. And um, I think the first year and a bit was discovering who I want to work for and who I don't want to work for. And there was a lot of that um, people trying to cut you down in price, but you're just so excited that you have a job in the first place that it's like you'll just take anything. <laughs> but then it's like, oh, that wasn't worth it. <laughs> it was just too hard. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't appreciate you and they get you to come back 10 times and they're never happy and it's like, it doesn't do anything for your self-confidence or your skill or your intuition or your business or anything. It's just not worth it. Yeah. So, but if you just stick, oh, for, stick with it and be real and, yeah. Oh, definitely. But, yeah, don't get me wrong. I did my first year, I just got probably like negative income and probably did most of my jobs for free but I just knew like I saw it as like um because I'm self-taught I saw it as it's like my, my uni education that I'll that I'll never do you know like I figure I've got a lot of work to do and I'm if I'm happy doing it I'll, I'll do it <laughs> Joe's something funny while I was talking to you I heard this thud and it's um where is he Oh, hello. <laughs> it's like you. Yeah, so he's decided to call me. I think he's hungry for milk. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. Has he got a name? Uh, yeah, well, the original um, um, rescuer called him Lucky. So, and he's, he's always keeping a keen eye on him. So I guess we've got to keep calling him Lucky. <laughs> oh, that's a but, very um, good name. <laughs> he hangs in the studio, so I've got a easel behind and we've got this heater, so yeah. he's just sort of in front of the heater all day. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like perfectly on cue for his little milk. Yeah. So we've got to give him short. That's awesome. Yeah. Your Joe looks very comfortable there. <laughs> looks like he's got oh, you can see him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it was a jumper, he'd, he'd crawl in. That's so cute. All right, I'll let you go. 